Hi guys, today we're going to be doing a crafting video and I use that term very, very loosely because it's a taxidermy video essentially. Um, today we're going to be, or I'm going to be showing you how to procure a wet specimen. Um, so if you don't like dead things, if you don't like reptiles, if you don't like dead reptiles, click off this video. <laughs> um, fair warning now, so don't come crying to me when you see dead things and it's not pleasant, so click off. Alright, so for those of you who have stayed, today I'm going to be sh using a spotted adder that died this morning in my house because we have two cats. Um, it's more commonly known as a, I think it's like a northern brown snake, it only gets to be about like a foot long. Um, so it got this morning, it was in our basement because we have an unfinished basement and of course I have two cats and they, I think they were, I'd like to think that they were playing with it and then accidentally killed it, but I have no idea. Regardless, it's dead and my mom's like, hey, do you want this? And I was like, of course. So I decided to start, uh, this is actually going to be one of my first wet specimens. Uh, so I figured I'd share that with you today. I normally work with ossified animal remains, which is like bones. And uh, so this will be an adventure for all of us. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so let's start with all the materials we're gonna need today. Number one would be some sort of glove. I have these like medical exam gloves. And whenever you're working with dead things and just random dead shit, um, don't touch it with your bare hands. There could be rot, regardless of how fresh it is too. There could be rot, there's always bacteria because as living, breathing animals, especially mammals, uh, we all have bacteria in our stomachs that, you know, help digest. I can't speak for reptiles, for frogs, I don't know as much about that. But, as a general consensus, don't touch dead shit without gloves. So, some sort of glove. I, if it's like really messy, use a thicker glove, but this is a, this just died a couple hours ago, and it's been in my freezer immediately, essentially. So, gloves. So secondly, you're gonna need a mason jar of some sort. This one is, uh, a self-sealing jar, which is essentially all mason jars, but it has this um, rubber coating on the inside. I got one that was really fresh and new. Like I just bought it. I went to Michael's for like two or three dollars, depending on the size. This one I think was like a pint, maybe. I'm not 100% on that, and it's like not. I don't know. It's I have no idea what it was. I think it was just a pint, um, and that's like a liquid pint, not like ice cream, essentially. So. We have this, and you want to make sure that the seal, you can seal it and hold this, or twist this really, really, really tight, because you don't want any of, like, the, someone's walking around up there, um, you don't want anything to spill out while you're, you know, moving, and you don't want anything to essentially release, you don't want any smells or anything to come out, which it shouldn't smell too bad, but, you know, whatever, uh, just in case. <laughs> The third thing you're gonna need is uh, rubbing alcohol. I got 70%, which is generally what they sell at drugstores. I got this for like, they're like 99 cents each at like, I got these at Safeway. Um, so I have three of them, cause I wasn't sure how much I was gonna need, um, but cause I didn't have this jar with me cause I went to Safeway before I got the jar. And so that should be, I got three because you never, I always end up needing more than I have. And you, don't really want that to happen, so I was safe and got three. Let's get our dead thing out of the freezer. All right. Okay, you guys. So as you can see, this little guy is very, very, very dead. Um, he was essentially cut in half, and his head was swished, and it wasn't very pretty. I don't know if you can see that. Hold on. There we go. Here's his underbelly. Again, he is a northern brown snake, and he is completely harmless. So if you see one of these in your house. Um, and like you're afraid that your pet is chew chewing on it, or like chew chewing, is that a word? It is now. Um, if you are afraid something is chewed on it, don't worry. So what I'm gonna do, because it's harmless, it's not venomous, and it doesn't even bite. So if you see one in your house and are like, holy shit, um, don't worry about it. So I'm gonna pick up this little guy real carefully because he's frozen. And uh, here we go. Oh, oh, he's real cold. Oh, poor guy. All right, here we go. I'm gonna get him in there, into the jar. And obviously as his body warms up, 
uh, he'll kind of settle at the bottom, but here he is. I don't know if you can see that, how well that's focused, but I will add some pictures at the end. All right. So as he's warmed up, his body will essentially loosen, but you know, I'm not too worried about that. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your, oh wow, he's, this is strong stuff. Okay. Take your alcohol. And you can probably, because you're not messing with dead stuff anymore, essentially, if you don't want to arrange it anymore, I'm going to just take my gloves off because you're not touching it anymore. So as long as you're cool with that, I'm cool with that. I'm not too worried about this one as much because it's not a mammal. So what I'm going to do is just pour my alcohol in there. Yep, there he goes. He's starting to shift because he's warming up. Because, you know, water, alcohol, level stuff. I don't know. Science. And you can see him up close. Oop, there he goes. Alright, I really only needed one, but I'm going to use the other one just to kind of top it off. Because I want to make sure that there is, like, almost more alcohol than I need. So I'm going to just use this one. And you can always use this for first aid, and I'm sure I'm going to have another wet mount in the future. But as you can see, he's kind of curling up, which is a little bit unfortunate, but you can always fix that. If I could open this with my nubs for nails. Okay. And this is just normal first aid alcohol. All right. Just wanted to top it off, essentially. Then what you're going to do... All right, let's see. How you doing, bud? All right. I have to come up with a name for him now, because I always name my oddities. Uh, I'll have to look up some names for Snake. I'll leave it in the description when I end up naming him. So you just want to pop this thing on here, and you're going to want to make sure this is, like, tight. Super duper tight. Um, to the point that if you shake it upside down, nothing's going to come out. And there you go. That is a wet mount specimen. This is just a little, little snaky dude. Okay, so the reason I used alcohol is because it's a long-term preservative and it should stay this way for uh, indefinitely until you essentially clean it out and, you know, if you need to change the alcohol, I guess, but um, there will be some discoloration, I've heard, from blood, if because everything has blood in it, essentially. Um, so if you find, if, if you find that it's kind of discolored, that's normal, they didn't do anything wrong. I fully expect this to be a little bit pink by, you know, in two months or so. But it shouldn't be that, um, discolored as it's such a tiny animal. <laughs> um, this will keep indefinitely because all you're doing really is pickling the animal, like, you know, pickles. Um, but with, you can't, obviously, you're not going to eat this, so. This is how you make a little wet mount and it's gonna go up on my shelf or like inside my little cupboard of random odd things so I hope you enjoyed and uh, this little guy says hi all right bye guys okay guys so it's about 15 minutes later and um, I did some research really quick stuff and I found a name I off the bat I already liked this little guy is gonna be named Nather because that's the Celtic word for snake I'm totally not saying that right, but I'm going to sound like an ignorant American and say nothing. I just feel like that, that just reminds me of snakes. It makes sense. So um, here he is. He's kind of scrunched down into what I expected him to. It's not just the straight. He's warmed up and body and muscles have moved. So here he is going to go into my little oddities cabinet over here with um, all my dead people pictures and a couple of the raccoon bones that I have left over from eager bones because I made some jewelry and stuff but um, there were a couple things that I thought were too fragile for wear so those are over in my oddities cabinet thing so let's go I'll show you all right so there he is next to all of my other bones and here's the rest of my oddities cabinet there's not a lot here left yet but hopefully I can change that, so there we go. New addition to the family, Nathair. Beautiful.